All right. So today we have something really awesome to talk about. So I've been gracing the channel with a lot of knife reviews, uh, all of them by other makers, and I am happy to announce that finally, finally, I have a knife on the channel of my own making. So, no further ado, I present you with Gungnir. Uh, named after the Spear of Odin, uh, this knife is a hefty, hefty beast. And before, before, uh, I get all the people in the comment section that are like, well, if you're going to name it after a spear, you should probably make it a spear point. I get it. Okay. I do get it. Um, I did, don't really like uh, spear point knives. It's not something that uh, that I enjoy. And when I looked at this knife, uh, when I when I finalized the drawing, the the name Gungnir uh, or the thought of Odin spear is really what what came up in my mind. So that's the the predominant reason for um, for naming it that way. And technically, any knife could be a spear. I'll tie it to the end of the stick. It, it's a spear. Don't don't at me. Uh, so let's get into the description of this knife. This knife hefts a hefty, hefty 4.25 inch blade with a four inch cutting area. So the belly of the knife here that is sharpened, uh, that is four inches. The blade material is a wonderful M390 that has been hollow ground to perfection. So that edge is wonderfully small, really thin back here in the back, super, super sharp in the front. Uh, overall length, we're coming in at just over 9.3 inches. I think it's right around 9.34, uh, but my calipers max out uh, at about 9.25. So we're just a little bit over that with a weight uh, coming in just a little bit on the heavy side uh, at six Point nine ounces. So let's talk a little bit about the, the design aspects of this knife. So we've got a absolutely gorgeous blade here. As I've mentioned before, we have a swedge that comes down just past the, the top of the hollow grind, but not all the way to the tip. Wanted to leave this tip nice and thin, but also wanted to keep it uh, nice and strong because we all know that uh, if anybody's like me, they're going to abuse the knife a little bit more <laughs> than they probably should. Uh, as I had mentioned before, we've got a beautiful hollow grind with a nice large choil uh, here in the front that is large enough to get your fingers in without poking up against the, uh, the blade of the knife. Uh, and that's a really nice point there uh, to get really choked up on the blade. Speaking of choking up, uh, and I'll have some some B-roll here that I'm going to edit in um, just to, to show some of these a little bit uh, closer. But the next item that we have is the jimping. So this jimping is on the large side. Uh, I like uh, some formidable jimping. I don't really like the, the super thin stuff uh, that ends up being more like a... Uh, a file up against your fingers. I wanted something that was nice and easy. Uh, every spot in between the jimping is chamfered, so there are nice little edges. Uh, and for those of you that may have uh, taken the time while I was showing that there to count the lines of jimping, uh, there are actually nine cutouts there. And because of the, the knife being named Gungnir after the Spear of Odin, I wanted to root a lot of the design aspects into Norse mythology. So one of those was the nine lines of jimping to signify the nine realms uh, in the Norse cosmos. So the nine realms of Norse mythology. Uh, I thought that was a nice little attribute that would kind of aid to or lend itself to the naming of the knife and the profile. Um, the appearance that I want the knife to have, uh, being, you know, in that, um, in that space, in that realm, uh, of, of naming the fuller, uh, on this knife you can see right here, uh, that we have kind of a classic style, uh, fuller, and then it's stair stepped. Uh, so there are actually some layers of milling that go around the shape uh, to give a little bit of texture uh, for you to hold onto the knife. Even with uh, this large blade, 
It is finger flickable, uh, middle finger flick, uh, thumb flick, uh, and the the flipper on the back. Uh, but I've actually found, so this is, I should have prefaced this in, this entire thing with, this is a uh, first prototype. So this is the very first prototype that I've received from the factory after submitting all of my, uh, my drawings and um, schematics. The, uh, one of the kind of, misunderstandings uh, between the the manufacturer and myself that we had is I had intended this to be a full cutout uh, with a stair step jimping uh, going down into an open cavity. Uh, and either by um, myself, my two dimensional drawing uh, may have been uh, somewhat lacking and may have given a, a misrepresentation or one of the hand drawn sketches that I had provided to them uh, at a later date might have done so, um, but they just kind of put a, a single milled fuller, uh, doesn't go all the way through on on both sides. So as I'm, I'm happy with the, the function of the knife, it flips open nice and easy. Uh, I think that it would be just slightly easier uh, if that notch would be fully milled out uh, and then some texture added on there uh, just to, to make it easy to, to hold on to. Uh, moving on uh, from the blade, we do have a bolster design. So we've got a titanium bolster with a nice bolster lock down there on the inside. Uh, a couple of the reviews that I've talked about, a lot of you have probably heard that uh, one of my biggest complaints about uh, a lock bar is the, the lack of a chamfer uh, in that area. So hopefully my, my B-roll footage uh, shows it. Uh, but there is a nice mild chamfer on the inside of that uh, lock bar there, just to give a little bit of relief uh, for the finger when you're opening and closing this knife. Another design change uh, that will be coming along with the next round of prototypes, which will probably be the production uh, samples, uh, is the bolster is a little bit smaller, I think, than it should be. And this uh, this was a note that actually came from another prevalent knife maker in the community. Really appreciate his input. Uh, and when I shared the, the technical drawings with him, uh, he had mentioned that. He's like, you know, you might want to size that bolster up just, just a tiny bit, um, scale it a little bit differently with the, with the overall handle. And as soon as, as soon as I opened these up from the package, I thought I got to message him, you know, he was exactly, exactly right. So uh, bolsters will be uh, elongated just a little bit. We're only talking about fractions um, in that space. Uh, I'm, I've been thinking here recently in, in the metric system um, because that's what, you know, going back and forth with the manufacturer, that's what uh, everything ends up being in. Uh, so we're talking about enlarging that about three, maybe four uh, millimeters, which is also going to make the bolster area right here, just a tiny bit bigger as well, which I think is going to add to the ease of use of that uh, lock bar. Through my testing of opening and closing the knife, even with the elongation of the bolster, uh, there's not going to be too much here uh, for your fingers to impact on. Uh, so unlike a lot of frame lock knives, bolster knives kind of cover that area so that you're not applying pressure to the lock bar when trying to open and close the knife. And I think that having that bolster slightly larger is not going to get in the way of that uh, in any way. Uh, moving on yet again, uh, we do have in this sample, we have a beautiful black micarta that is done very, very well. And we've got two clip options uh, for this knife. So I am currently talking with the, the manufacturer about the opportunity to offer both of these, uh, but with minimum order quantities, uh, it may be a little bit difficult. So feel free to let me know in the comment section, deep carry wire clip or milled titanium clip. Uh, both of the clips work very, very well in and out of the pocket. The, the wire clip, I think, lends a lot to ease of carry, especially with a larger knife like this, having this deep carry option, gets it a little bit deeper down into the, the pocket uh, and kind of make this makes this knife disappear. But at the price point uh, that I'm considering, I think that the milled clip is really the norm in that, uh, in that scenario. 
So definitely weigh in in the comment section. Let me know what your thoughts are about that. Uh, we do have full titanium frame. We have a titanium backspacer with a lanyard hole, and this contours along with the scale so we don't have anything sticking out in any way, shape, or form, uh, and it has a nice large area there. So leather, uh, lanyards, nylon, paracord, whatever you're wanting to put in there, you shouldn't have any kind of issue uh, fitting it into that section. Knife blade fits in very, very well. Um, when I design this knife, uh, I really, really like a knife when it's closing where you have to question, okay, does the blade fit all the way in the scale? And then kind of at that last minute, it disappearing. And I think I hit that just a little bit, uh, not quite to the level that I would like to. I love, uh, I love to look at a knife and see a blade that looks like it's sticking out three or four feet and then it come down clear across the back and then down in. Uh, and I think I hit that just a little bit, um, but it was kind of difficult to get that design exactly where I wanted it in that scenario. But overall, uh, this is uh, first impressions of the, uh, of the sample. Uh, I've had this in pocket for, oh, I think about five days now. And I'm going to throw some of my, my phone footage up in the, uh, in the corners of the video, but I have abused the daylights uh, out of this. I got a new leather sewing machine uh, and it came packaged up with all kinds of nylon banding and copper staples and real heavy cardboard and chunks of plywood that were laminated onto stuff. Uh, I've used it for skiving leather. Uh, I decided to just hack and chop away at a, a stump, just kind of do some torture tests on the on the lock bar, on the pivot, on the blade steel, uh, which this did come in at a nice uh, 61 uh, hardness uh, on, the, on the Rockwell scale. So really, really happy about the, the heat treat and manufacture of this M390. Uh, but... I have done everything in my power under typical use standards and even above and beyond those use standards uh, to, to abuse this knife. I still have yet to sharpen it over those five days and it's still absolutely shaving sharp. Uh, so it's hit every kind of design or quality aspect that I really, really want out of a, a knife. And I think that the manufacturer um, really blew it out of the water. Now, I know next question is going to be, well, who's the OEM, Who, who's the manufacturer? And unfortunately, uh, as of, oh, 2.25 uh, on Monday, uh, the May 3rd. Uh, so the afternoon of May 3rd, I am still limited uh, by a non-disclosure agreement, so I am not allowed to talk about the manufacturer at this time. Uh, I have really been pushing them now that we have the, the samples. Everything looks really good. The design is fully functional. I've been really pushing them to release me from that NDA uh, because I would love to tell, um, would really love to tell everybody I am, <laughs> I am really teeming with excitement to, to tell everybody who the manufacturer is. Uh, is. So hopefully I hear back from them uh, in the next couple of days and we, we get through that. So that's kind of the, the end of my early impressions uh, on my very own prototype. Uh, this knife is going to be released under um, my store name, which is Renegade Provisions Company. So this is going to be the Renegade Provisions Co. Gungnir. And... I, I quite honestly couldn't be more elated, excited, uh, whatever <laughs> word that you want to put in there. Uh, I'm, I'm absolutely boiling over with how well the design uh, turned out. Um, I know that there are a lot of makers out there that have they've had their knives, and I'm sure that they all felt, uh, had their knives made, and I'm sure that they've all felt the exact same way that I do right now, where you, you slaved over a... Um, piece of graph paper and you drew everything out and you're thinking of, okay, I want this and I want this and I want this and this is what I want this to mean and this is what I want to name it. And you have this whole process that kind of goes into all of it. And then four or five months down the line, a box comes in the mail and it's your knife. It's, uh, it, it's beyond belief. So 
Thank you very much uh, for for joining in. Uh, I'm going to put some of those uh, some of those little video clips, some of the B-roll to play here at the end. Uh, so enjoy it. Let me know your questions down below, and have a great day.